Okay, I'm Luke. This is Louie. Louie, wave the camera. Hello. And Louie, you just got a job in software. Yes. Yeah, I started my first full-time role at the first week of May. Okay, we'll so May 2023, first job in software. And, you, it, you know, I'm doing this series interviewing people who have just gotten into software because it's a tough time to get into software. Um, and so um, before we jump into the experience, uh, tell me a little bit about your background. I, I think it's uh, it's a little uh, eclectic. Or Yeah, that's that's a good word for it. Um, the the past like eight or nine years post uh, college where I got an environmental studies degree um included some wilderness guiding uh farm farm work and natural resource management and some other like various tree work and the last the job i was in when i first got the idea to per check out coding i was working in uh, drinking water treatment um so i was kind of hopping around every like one to two years um experimenting and seeing what different things are like because i like i like being outside surprise surprise um but uh yeah and then it wasn't until the fall of 2021 i was on a trip out west with a friend and we were driving from denver to portland and he was like working in the car and taking like meetings at our campsite and stuff and he had um completed a boot camp in early 2020 after working as like a welder and teacher and some other things um so that sort of i think helped me realize that the like barrier to learning like a technological skill wasn't as high as i thought it had been um because like before that i had next to zero exposure to like computers and programming okay and i'm sorry when did you say that trip was Oh yeah, uh, that was the that was the fall of 2021, and then so that uh, that winter I kind of started looking into it and researching uh, coding boot camps because even even though I knew that it seemed like something I could learn, the thought of going the like self taught route was still like really intimidating to me. So I was looking at coding boot camps. Um, so I found one that was a part-time remote one based in uh, based in Portland, Oregon, called Epicotus, because um, I was not able to leave. I knew I wasn't going to be able to leave my then employer, um, so I needed to be able to do something like in the evenings and weekends while working full time. Um, and so that one, it's a it's a typically longer boot camp than average. There, I think their full time program runs about twenty weeks. And then the part-time one was 40 weeks. So I was in it from March until December of last year. Um, so it was it was a time investment for sure. But I knew starting out at least that the like class schedule and the actual like in-person virtual classroom time would be like a huge like um would help me get committed. To, to the learning which obviously you need to do <laughs> yeah. yeah and so uh 40 weeks you finished in december started in march of 2022 what was the curriculum like for that boot camp yeah so the first it was kind of split up into thirds um the first third was just your basics uh html css javascript and then we were actually the last cohort that learned uh, jquery as well they were kind of like phasing it out um, and then the second third, middle third was, uh, C sharp and .net. Um, so they kind of taught that in addition to the JavaScript as potential, like extra, like backend stack. Um, and then the last third was react. And, uh, then we used, uh, a Firebase, like NoSQL while using react and stuff. Oh, that's an interesting mix. Usually people go with node for the back end and C sharp.net. Interesting. Yeah. And then yeah. to like bookend it with with uh, you know, like front end and then back end mm -hmm. and then front end again. That's that's interesting. I don't hate it yeah. though. I yeah, don't... they uh they've been I think they've been in business since like twenty twelve in Portland. Um with the start of the pandemic, like everyone else, they went online. Um 
and they've had a lot of iterations. Like I think um, last year was their like last ever. They they did a Ruby track too. Um, I think last year they did that for the last time, and I don't know if they're I don't know if they're gonna be upgrading to like a node. Um, yeah, because I was getting out of boot camp, I started seeing like or towards the end of boot camp, and I was looking at jobs where I saw a node everywhere. So I actually had kind of learned node for my capstone um oh. and did that some that okay. way too cool um well so you worked that whole time yes yeah i was working uh, 40 hours and the uh the class schedule my class schedule at least with the time difference was um 9 p.m to midnight since i'm on the east coast um, oh, right. normally it was like six to nine for the folks out west um and then on sunday they have a full day from like nine to five so for me it was 12 to eight um so there was seven 17 hours of like live class time um where usually you were uh pair programming with somebody like either working through the lesson or just kind of working on like small projects small like one-off projects just to, like reinforce a concept um and it was now it was definitely long but I definitely feel like I learned a lot coming from a pretty non-existent background before. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so what happened after December, you know, when you graduated? Oh, yeah. yeah, so after December, um, I had I had started applying for jobs in, like, September, I think, um, just because I knew it was going to be, like, a process <laughs> so I was trying to, like, get as much of a jump on it as I could, um, they do, they did have career services through the boot camp with like resume and cover letter prep and some like mock interviews and, um, a couple, they, we did whiteboarding a little bit in like the second half of it, like once a month, we'd have like a whiteboarding evening, um, where we take turns doing like a whiteboarding problem uh, in front of like two or three people. Um, but then as I started applying the jobs, I, was here like everyone else when they started applying with no experience you like hear nothing um so I kind of took to LinkedIn a little more and was getting some like different uh different perspectives and opinions on things and making like changes here and there and I I did get um I did actually get two interviews before my boot camp ended um since I know you had wanted to ask about interviews at some point too um they but then after my boot camp ended um i was still applying and i actually two weeks after my boot camp ended i applied for this program called the collab lab uh, which is run by volunteer developers and they do like a few cohorts a year with usually you're in a group of four working on a project with a couple mentors for like eight weeks um so i applied and got into that um so i did that like january and february um, and then around that same time, um, actually a lot, a lot of things happened in the first few weeks after <laughs> boot camp. Um, and then around that same time, my, a friend that approached me about working a part-time contract with him for a startup that he had like used to work for. They needed some extra help finishing some stuff. So I started doing that like a couple nights a week as well. And that was, that was a full like, um, full javascript stack or typescript with node and react and everything and like a mysql database so i sort of got exposure to my first like big code base that way and then the following the week after i started that um i was actually contacted by my now job um about a technical interview that they sent to me they sent me like a code sandbox link um and then I completed that and sent it. And then the following week had, sorry, two weeks later, had an interview with the development team. Um, and then didn't hear anything for like a couple of weeks. And so while I was doing that, still doing the contract and the collab lab stuff. And then at the end of early, yeah, sorry, early February, they were like, we would, we wanted to make you an offer. Um, however, we might need to put that like on the back burner or table that for a minute and i was like okay so i checked back like a week later and um so they were what they ended up doing 
was they said they could bring me on like as a part-time contractor in the meantime um because i needed to line up some like additional clients and stuff i think to because it is it is a it's a small local company here in uh, western massachusetts i think they were looking for a little more like revenue stream before another like full-time employee um so for uh february march and like the first half of april um i was doing like seven to ten hours a week with them um not the the full-time thing was they were hoping for it but it wasn't like a given um so all that while i was still like job hunting and networking and working on um endlessly working on resume and like cover letter edits and stuff um and then yeah then finally in april they sent me an email about uh about the like full-time offer and i was like yeah let's do it um so yeah i started in i started in may um yeah <laughs> there you go okay it was so a kind of roundabout um yeah. <laughs> and like you said a lot happened you know those first couple months um so you got a contracting job part-time right so they were paying you yeah and and that was um typescript react uh, node mysql database mm -hmm. and just for a startup and how how much was that but not how much to pay but like how <laughs> much work were you doing oh yeah it was um it was it was similar it was it was like anywhere from like six to ten hours a week just kind of depended on like how much i had time for because i was i was working 40 hours a week doing like five or six hours a week for the collab lab in january and february and then I would, I was trying to do that one like two nights a week, um, which, and with the, since I was working like with my friend, he knew that I had a lot going on. Um, and so he was, he was cool with being like flexible and kind of like letting, just letting him know if I had time to do a couple hours that night or not. Was the um, friend still with the startup? Uh, he was not. No, he had, uh, he had left a few months before that because they had, run out of money okay <laughs> to pay him yeah oh and is this the same friend who you went on the trip with uh no it's actually a different friend um i have, have a uh, lot of developer friends <laughs> yeah uh, i was friends i have a large group of or like a core group of friends i've known some of them since like second grade and like middle school and stuff and like two of uh two of them went the traditional like cs route um, with college and stuff and then two others one in 2017 and one in 2020 went to coding boot camps and made the switch um so yeah like four or five people i've known since i was like 12 <laughs> oh, <cool>. um, so <laughs> yeah yes yeah, so it, it was i had a lot of a lot of uh people i could ask questions last year and stuff so That's it was great. very it was a it was a great privilege to have i could get a lot of different perspectives on things yeah, that's fantastic. Um, so you were you were working at the same place you'd been working in 2021 through through this whole time. Yep. Yeah, I was working for a, a local municipality doing uh, drinking water treatment, um, which wasn't very exciting, but it did have uh, it did have some downtime. Like once once you got the routine down, so I would typically spend like an hour to an hour and a half a day at work, just kind of like drive i have some like selfies from like earlier this year and like last year of me like sitting in a work truck with like a, a laptop propped against like the steering wheel like in the middle of a field um working on like a coding project and stuff um so i got i was able to do a few extra hours a week that way too um but it was a yeah it was a mix of staying up at late staying up late at night for a while and uh being able to sneak away and do some coding at my previous job that kind of like helps yeah. with the transition a little bit yeah that's a nice benefit you know it's like one of those hidden benefits but it's uh yeah it's not not trivial for sure yeah um and so just to get a feel for how much you are staying up late and working on weekends and stuff it sounds like every sunday for the whole time you were in your boot camp you were pretty much all sunday was coding right and then how many days a week were you doing that nine to midnight or eight to midnight, whatever it was? 
Uh, that was that was three nights a week. So that was like Monday through Wednesday night. So mm-hmm. it was like Sunday, pretty much Sunday through Wednesday had at least like three hours of like designated like class time on the computer working with usually at least one other person in the boot camp. And then did you have to spend time outside of that? Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Usually the, the way that the, the full time program works is like you do class Monday through Thursday and then you have all of Friday for your like weekly coding independent project, which gives you like a, uh, then gets reviewed and stuff. Um, but in the part-time program, since it's twice as long, it was like every other weekend kind of deal. Um, so like every other week you'd spend anywhere from like four to like, there were a few like tricky ones that a couple of them took like 12 hours <laughs> when we were like kind of getting introduced to like new topics and stuff so yeah every other week there'd be like five or so extra hours and usually i spent like an hour to two most of the other days as well um Um, just since i wasn't having like a designated like 40 plus hour like daily schedule like in a full-time route or i'd be able to like take time off work and stuff mm -hmm. yeah no that that's a impressive you were able to you know (laughs) for that long spend that much (laughs) of your free time you know learning Mm -hmm. software and so it it sounds like you know um you know with those two interviews you generated um before you even graduated your boot camp and a couple after that you know that that sounds to me like you were pretty successful in you know whatever you were doing to generate interviews and get Mm -hmm. people to reach back to you it it was kind of working right what were you doing um the the four interviews I actually had out of my like I didn't I didn't keep like hard numbers on how many applications I sent mostly for my own mental health um but it was it was probably between 250 and 300 I'd say kind of spread out between like September and I was still applying for jobs in April like before I got the offer um, so I was like spread out over like six or seven months. Um, yeah, of those four, they all came from like cold applying off of uh, LinkedIn and Bead. And I think I got one off of Otta, like OTTA. They, they kind of have like smaller companies. Um, but the, uh, I think the, the first, the, the very first one I got was from just an easy apply. I think it was in, an early application so I got looked at uh the second one I was a I applied and at the time had a two-month LinkedIn premium trial so I saw like the job poster and I was able to message them um like follow up like right away and then this local this other one on Indeed they were looking for um a local hybrid candidate and that's what ended up being my job um, cause they're like in an even smaller part of like Western Massachusetts than I live in. So I, I don't, I haven't had the courage to ask yet, but I can't imagine the like candidate pool is very large. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm, I'm gonna wait till I'm like very comfortable and just be like, so <laughs> how, like, what was, what was my competition? Be honest. Like if it, <laughs> you were the only one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that way. And that way in case it is like, a, well, we had these other people, we like couldn't afford them kind of response. Then at least I'll be like, okay, I deserve that. Um, but, but yeah. And then the, yeah, I think the other one was another photo pie in LinkedIn. Okay. So um, when you were, so you get one was an easy apply, right? And then yeah. the others, were you doing like cover letters and, you know, tailoring your resume to the job description? Or was um, it- I, I did as much as I could um, early on when there like wasn't as much experience to like choose from. I wouldn't often have that much to change just because everything that I could put on it was on it. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I might like I might have like changed the title at the top to like match what the job description was like software developer or software engineer or whatever. I don't, I don't know if that ever actually like did anything or not. Um, and I, I wrote like, I wrote two different 
like versions of a cover letter. Um, I was a lot of jobs that I looked at or was hoping to work for were like either climate tech or like environmental or like sustainability related like organizations. So like I had one cover letter that talked about my sort of like environmental degree and natural resource like management background and stuff. And then another one that just talked a little more generally about some once I started getting some of the contract work then I talked a little more generally about like some of the things I was doing in those roles and stuff um and then once I had those two I just kind of usually like changed the company name and like the position name inside of it um and I didn't really didn't really seem that like the few hiring managers that I'd seen like talking about like or recruiters on LinkedIn talking about like cover letters they're like unless it's like mind-blowing or like phenomenal like it's probably not like going to like sway our opinion too much and then I had heard other people say they're like oh yeah we don't like look at those so some sometimes if it was if it was a company I didn't like particularly like feel super connected to and it didn't have like the red asterisk next to the cover letter for require I just didn't uh, include it um yeah. I know there's there's some some of the job application platforms have like the anything else you'd like us to know. Like sometimes I'd write like a paragraph, just kind of like blurb about myself in there. Um, but I was after doing it for so many months, I was unless I like absolutely had to or like felt like really connected or like inspired by the company. I didn't spend like too much time on the cover letter. Okay. Um, yeah. So. <laughs> I guess when you were telling, you know, the, the history and the, um, you know, your experience, I kind of was like, oh, all the highlights, like you had a lot going on, but there are a lot of jobs you apply to. <laughs> so yeah. maybe yeah. It, just, it, it felt like, man, you had such, you know, a great return on investment for all your efforts, but <laughs> yeah, no, I, it, it, uh, it's tough out there. Um, okay. So you, the the job you accepted in May, you had started contracting with them in February, right? Mm -hmm. And so, um, you how did you get in touch with them again? Which which job was it? Uh, the, they were they were one I applied to off of Indeed. Indeed, um, okay. yeah. And so how yeah. did how did that go? Like they reached out to you and said, "Hey, we want you to do this coding challenge." It was a sandbox. You did it, sent it in, and then what? You heard back a week later, or a couple of days later. Yeah, yeah. The uh, when I first looked found the job description, I like sent it to one of my friends in my boot camp, and I think I remember they in the job description they said like ideal candidate had like four years of experience, even though the uh, word junior was like in the title. Um, and so I sent it to a friend. I was like, should I even waste my time there? Like, yeah, why not? I was like, okay. So I, <laughs> like I sent it in, and I I did include like uh, that was one of the more like environmental related cover letters um because they uh they make or i guess we we make a sustainable building material software for like um projects for tracking like environment some of the building product um sort of or building project certifications require like really strict uh, record keeping of like all the products and all their ingredients and their like environmental impact and stuff so um yeah. So I included like a blurb about that. And then I didn't hear back for six weeks, I think, after I applied. So I think I waited two weeks and I sent, I messaged like, uh, like a follow up through Indeed. And then like didn't hear anything. And two weeks later, I messaged another follow up. And then it was like Christmas time. So I was, I had kind of like given up hope on that one. Um, and then, yeah, then the first week of January, they just like sent me an email with a link to the code sandbox. And then a week later, um, it was a virtual interview. And then two weeks after that, it was the like quasi job offer. So I only actually had like one actual interview with them. Um, so it was a pretty quick turnaround once it started happening. Yeah. Tell me about the uh, coding challenge they sent you. What was it? Yeah. Um, so they they used uh, an NPM package to just generate uh, like 100 fake products. And they basically wanted me to like call the like API generated from like the product 
maker um, and display the products in a table and to include like um like a search search functionality and like pagination and that was that was all it really was um and they they encouraged the use of uh material ui components because that's what a lot of the code base is in since it's a construction uh basically construction materials software so um so it's a lot of a lot of tables <laughs> mm -hmm. um and then that was that was about it and they said like they said like oh we're not expecting it to be like perfect and like try not to try to only spend a couple hours on it and anything like else you want to change like we can like talk about it or anything else you were thinking we can talk about it in the interview kind of deal um and uh how many hours did you wind up spending on it um i think i i think i spent close to three and then the following week when i didn't hear back um i started working on it a little more just for my own just like enrichment sort of because <laughs> right. i hadn't um i hadn't done much with typescript yet at that point so i did a little more um looking up some like uh best practices and separating of like components and stuff um so i probably spent another like two hours on it and i was i was i told him in the interview i was like well i did, I did tell him i was like i probably spent like closer to like four to five hours on it just because i hadn't heard anything and <laughs> they were like oh okay that's fine um okay uh but you had sent it in at like yeah. two or three hours okay yeah and, yeah um okay and uh, did you like finish it like you got all the way through the pagination and stuff yes yeah i got through the I got through the pagination because because of using the material UI components, a lot of that um, is built in. So I just had to like, tr basically just had to like spend some time reading the docs um, and finding the like correct way to like enable pagination and like set how many rows I want for stuff. Oh, um, nice. Yeah, it ended up, yeah, it ended up not being as difficult as I thought it was going to be initially. Mm -hmm. And so you said they asked you to do it in TypeScript too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they had the they had it they had it set up um, basic. They had it set up for like a page to display the products on, and then like the utility for um, generating the products and stuff. So everything was already in TypeScript. Um, okay. And uh, in your boot camp, had you done any TypeScript? I can't remember you mentioning that. No, I hadn't. Um, I had just started looking at it like the week before with my friend. Um, so it wasn't, um, we didn't do anything like too fancy. It was basically just like, like, oh, okay. And this is how to create the interface, like for these components props and just like making sure like types were defined and stuff. Okay. Um, so it wasn't, it wasn't anything like uh, too detailed with the TypeScript. Okay. And then um the interview you did, um, who who all was in that? What what was it like? Yeah, so it was the uh there were four people from the company, which is pretty much the entire development team. Um because it's only like a 14 or 15 person company. Um there were two other developers and the product manager and sort of the like systems architect. Um and so, yeah, they just kind of asked me about kind of like this, kind of asked me to talk, talk about like what I was doing in boot camp and like projects I had worked on. And um, I, so I talked about boot camp stuff and I'd been like in the contract for a couple of weeks. So I like mentioned that briefly and uh, kind of touched on the stuff I was doing in the lab lab. And then they kind of had me like walk through my uh, technical um, project. Uh, or the, the assessment they'd sent me mm -hmm. um and just sort of like asking my like thought process and why like why i did certain things um and then at the end they they told me my project didn't have one of the bugs that a lot of the other submissions did um i guess the uh for the for folks who did do like the search functionality um if they didn't like store or save the original product list in state um as soon as they started like deleting the input on the search bar it like 
regenerated a product list on like every backspace. Um, so it was like, it was a different list generated after deleting the previous search. Um, so they like commended me on that. Um, and I was, and so I, and then I think after that, I just kind of asked questions about company and like work style and um, sort of what office life was like and like how much it required ended up only being one day a week in the office because it was listed as a hybrid role um yeah and then then from then just followed up like a week later like the say to do it and then, <laughs> then they're like well give us one more week and then... <laughs> <laughs> there you go um and so that was the whole interview process and i i love short and sweet interview processes that's yeah <laughs> most of the ones i've done and made it to the job were very short like that um mm -hmm. So, uh, started as a contractor. What what kind of work are you doing now? Um, it's becoming like slightly more complex over the last couple of months. It's probably like seventy percent front end. Um, I started I started out with uh, converting some like old uh, Rails views into like TypeScript and React pages um because they initially when they first made the app in like 2014 they did everything in ruby on rails and then like three years ago switched all of the client facing stuff to uh sorry this big truck right by um switch oh cool oh sorry um they switched all the client facing stuff to react and then um they there's some like internal tools that like i was i've been working on converting the last couple of months and um now it's sort of getting to like helping some more with like newer features because they're trying to add some like additional like workspaces for like clients to use and stuff um but it's yeah it's mostly it's mostly typescript react and uh graphql um and then occasionally have to like update or amend some like ruby files for like graphql types and stuff okay um I, I kind of uh, got ahead of myself a little bit, but um, in the interview yeah. process, um, why do you think you got the job? Like, what do you think you did well? Um, I I was able to, I think I was able to speak confidently on what I did know and was like comfortable admitting like this was hard for me or like I needed to like look this up kind of thing. Um, I think it also helped uh, that I have a slightly related background for like the industry for that company, uh, with, like the environmental stuff and also just living like 30 minutes away from most of the people in the interview. We were able to kind of like chit chat a little about like local stuff and some like non-technical things. Um, so I think that, I think that kind of helped both like, create kind of like a personable impression and also kind of uh soothe my anxieties a little bit because mm -hmm. i was like okay i am talking casually about things in an interview for a coding job not about coding and they seem receptive like, okay that's fine. Uh, <laughs> kind of thing um and yeah i haven't so i guess i guess that was kind of my as those are the kind of things i always like try to do in interviews um, the few, the few that I had, um, luckily I was, I was fortunate that I never had an interview with like an on the spot, like whiteboarding prompt or like ESA problem to solve, um, and like work through, which is fine for me, <laughs> which is, yeah. um, I think if, if I was in that situation, I think I would perform very differently. <laughs> um, but yes, yeah, so I think, I think a lot of those factors, both like technical and soft skills related kind of coincided and helped yeah no I, as you say I'm, I, I think that's insightful um okay well I, I think we've gone through most of our questions um yeah I think we did um and we're, we're getting close on time here just want to thank you for sharing your story um I, I well, think yeah, of it course help a lot of people and um also plug for real I am subscribed to real because of you Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the bamboo toilet paper. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. We, I'm uh, on that because it it speaks to how much you do LinkedIn because 
I am subscribed to Real because of you. Our conversation on LinkedIn. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. LinkedIn. I I feel like I took a a non. I tried to take a. Or I didn't try to. But I ended up taking like a non traditional approach to LinkedIn because I didn't think I was doing anything like super unique with my like personal products projects and stuff. So I was like, oh, I'll just like to chat with people and talk about my background and at least try to like make a few friends <laughs> yeah no i loved it i loved it well cool man thanks again i'll uh hit the stop button here